Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can pick up objects, move around with them, move it closer or further away from you and then drop it back down. So let's get started. So in this scene, I'm using the same system as my first person controller tutorial, which may be useful to watch to get started if you don't have an FPS controller yet. And this features a player game object and a camera holder game object, both having child objects for things such as orientation and camera position. I then have a canvas with a crosshair image in the middle. And finally, I have a number of assets that I'll be using as pickup objects. These assets are taken from a website known as Filebase, the ultimate library of over 2000 high quality asset packs, including props, vehicles and special effects and are super simple to import into Unity. I've partnered up with Filebase to give you access to all of these assets for free for a month. Head to the link in the description and use the code on screen. Now let's get started. So there's a few things as always that we need to do in the editor before we go into a script. So what we need to do is create an empty game object under our camera where the objects are going to be held at. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my camera holder here and then onto my main camera. So as the player turns, this camera holder will rotate with it. Then the main camera will rotate from there. I'm going to right click on my main camera, create empty, and I'm just going to type in pick up holder. Now from this on the Z axis, which is the blue arrow, I'm just going to drag this outwards to about here and we can leave that there. Then the next thing we need to do is we're gonna to go to our props that we have here. So I'm gonna select on one and shift select so it selects all of the ones in the middle. So that's all of these props that have an outline here. These are all the objects that I want to be able to pick up. So these need a few components. So firstly, I'm gonna add a box collider. I'm also gonna give them all a rigid body. And it's important to set the interpolate mode to interpolate and set the collision detection to continuous. This means that if we are interacting with these objects, it's not gonna look jagged and it will interact with objects pretty smoothly. And finally, any objects that we want to be able to pick up, we're gonna to need to have the same script on. So I'm gonna create a new script. I'm gonna type in pick up new script and then create an add. And then we can open this up in Visual Studio. So in our script, we need to assign some variables. So firstly, I'm gonna type in public transform pick up points. And for now, that's all we're going to have. But later in the video, we're going to add some more variables. And then we're going to use two Unity functions, one known as void on mouse down. We can remove the private here and also void on mouse up. Now, these functions are basically called when you click on a particular object. That's when on mouse down is called and on mouse up is called is when you let go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the parent of this object. So transform dot parent equal to our pickup point dot transform so basically when we're setting child game objects and parents we use transform dot parent and then we set it to the transform of a game object and then in our on mouse up i'm just going to set the transform dot parent equal to null so the pickup item has no parent back in the editor if we select all of our items here and then we drag our pickup holder game object into this transform here and press play you can see that we've got our camera rotation but then we've also got our mouse here and if i click on an object you can see that we can kind of pick it up, but there is some issues. And the reason for this is because we have a rigid body attached and gravity is basically going against what we're trying to do with it here. So there's a few fixes that we have to do. Firstly, what I'm going to do here is in our start function, I'm going to set my cursor.lock state equals cursor mode.locked. And I'm also going to set cursor.visible to false. What this is going to do is set the cursor to the center of our screen at all times and set it to false. So it will basically be in the position directly in the middle of the screen where our crosshair is. This means that when we click on objects, it will be directly in the middle of the screen. Now, this is one extremely simple way of just clicking objects in the middle. However, if you only want to reach certain distances, you may want to use a raycast. Now, you can use the raycast that I used in this video. So you can reuse this physics raycast and just check to see if you are colliding with an object of a particular tag, for example. But for now, this method also works. And what I'm also going to do in our on mouse down function. So when we are clicking on the object, I'm going to grab the rigid body of this object and I'm going to disable gravity. So we can do this directly in a script so we can get the component rigid body and then access the use gravity boolean and set that to false. What I'm also going to do is get component. I'm going to access our box collider and I'm going to disable that. So this is great, but at the moment when we click down, we disable gravity and we disable the box collider, but it will remain that way even when we let go. So what we need to do is go into our on mouse up and do the reverse. So get component rigid body, use gravity and set that to true and then do the same for our box collider. So now if we press play, we can now pick up objects when we click on them move around with them and then we can let go and it will interact with other objects very nicely. If we interact with another object, let go and then drag it while it's moving, you may see some weird issues just like that. You can see that the object is moving and it's, it's making some weird movements. What we want to do is freeze the object the minute we select it so it's not rotating and leaving our middle point, which as you can see, this cardboard box is desperately trying to float away. 
So what I'm going to do in our script, let's grab a reference to that rigid body again, and let's just set the velocity to vector 3.0. This is going to stop any position movements of the rigid body so it cannot float away. And then we just need to do the opposite again when we let go. And then we don't need to do anything in our on mouse up function as from there we can let the rigid body take its own course. So now if an object is moving a little bit weird it will instantly freeze into place and you can see it cannot go anywhere. And if you want to prevent this rotation all we need to do is go into our script here and do get component rigid body dot rotation dot freeze rotation and set that to true and then we can set the freeze rotation back to false when we let go and you can see that if an object phases and starts to spin the minute we select it it freezes its position and freezes its rotation so it cannot do any of that weird stuff it will freeze instantly so if you're having any bugs or if you have moving parts this will immediately stop it in place providing you have the same components on your objects and then when we let go it will just perform its normal course rotation is enabled position is enabled gravity is enabled and the collider is enabled so that's great we're almost there but the last step that i want to do is be able to move our object closer or further away so we can place it at different distances so this is where we're going to add a few more things to our script just to allow this so in our script here what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new private transform I'm going to call this original point and with this in our start function I'm going to set the original point equal to our pickup point and the reason we do this in the start function is because in our mouse functions I'm going to be changing the position of the pickup point there's going to be certain times when I want this pickup point to go back to its starting point which will be original point from here I also need two booleans which I'm going to call position set and also picked up now position set we are going to use this to see if the pickup point position has been set to the position of an object that can be picked up and we're going to do this before we set the parent transform and this means that when we pick up an object it's not going to instantly teleport to our pickup point what's going to happen is the pickup point is going to teleport to the object and then the object will be parented so wherever you pick up the item from it will just pick it up directly from there rather than teleporting over if this seems a little bit hard to visualize in your head just hang in there it will make a lot of sense soon so what i'm going to do here in our mouse down function i'm going to check if position is not set so we use an exclamation mark at the start to check this is currently false and inside this I'm going to set position set equal to true so this only runs once because otherwise without this this would just run every frame so by doing this the minute that this one is true position set will be set to true meaning this function will no longer run until this is set back to false again and then under that I'm going to set the pickup point dot position equal to the transform dot position of any object that we want to be picked up so this will only happen once when we first pick up the object so the position of our pickup point transform is now set and now when we let go of the button we need to set position set equal to false initially and like we mentioned earlier when we let go we want to set our pickup point dot position back to the original position it started at so at the moment with what we've just added that fixes the issue of the object teleporting to the position but now what i want to be able to do is have the object's position be tied to a scroll wheel so we can move it forward and back so it is not tied to exactly where we pick it up from this is where our other boolean comes in so what we're going to do in our mouse down function we are going to set picked up equal to true so when we are holding down on an object the object is picked up and when we let go we're going to set picked up equal to false again at the moment this isn't going to do anything we haven't actually set any code to have the object's position be determined by the scroll wheel and the reason we've set this picked up is so we can access it in the update function because if we try to do transform.translate in our on mouse down or on mouse up functions because this is not being triggered every single frame this is only when the user User presses the mouse down so now in our update function we're going to check if picked up so if we're currently holding this object we're going to use pickup point dot transform dot translate so now we are directly moving the object and what i'm going to use here for the direction is going to be camera so we're accessing our main camera dot main dot transform dot forward so now we are referencing directly forward and back of our camera so essentially wherever we are aiming i'm going to multiply this by time Dot delta time i'm then going to multiply it by 100 so it's actually at a speed that is feasible and finally we need to multiply it by our input dot get axis and then in unity the scroll wheel is set to mouse scroll wheel this has to be typed exactly like this so mouse scroll wheel with a capital m capital s and a capital w and finally the space that we need to set this to is our world space not local so we're going to do space dot world this means this is not dependent on the local transform of the camera or pickup point or anything like that and from there we can add a semicolon to close this off and this should be all the code we need so to recap when we click on our mouse on an object we set picked up to true if our position set boolean is false then we instantly set it to true so this won't run until it's false again and we set our pickup point dot position to the position of the objects that we've just picked up and this only happens once like i just said after that we set this object to be a child of our pickup point object 
So whenever we move our camera, the pickup point will move with it. And because this is a child of it, this will also move. Then we access different components to ensure there's no weird bugs going on. And then in our update function, we can move our object if it's picked up with the scroll wheel. And finally, when we let go of the mouse, we set these booleans to false. We set the pickup point dot position back to the original point. We make sure this object has no parent. And then we just reverse what we did with our components. And now, as you can see back in our game view, if I click on an object, you can see that it does not weirdly teleport to the pickup position. It will be picked up exactly from where it was. We can let go. And also, as promised, if we pick the object up and use our scroll wheel, you can see that it moves further and closer away. And we can let go and it will be dropped further away. We can then pick it up, bring it closer with the scroll wheel and then let go again. This is exactly what we want. If you want to control the speed of the scroll wheel, in our update function, just multiply all of those floats that were used with a public float known as speed and then you can adjust it in the inspector. But for now, we've got just about everything that we asked to do. So I can walk around, switch to a different object, put it on this one. I can then pick it up, move it away, drop it off and so on. So on that note, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Make sure to subscribe if you did. Make sure to head down to Filebase in the description and get your free month. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.